In lesson 11 and 12, the students worked on factoring and distributing expressions. So I'm going to go over the first examples. Use the greatest common factor and the distributive property to write equivalent expressions for the following expressions. Since we've already worked extensively with GCF and LCM, I'm going to encourage students to stick with the latter method to factor expressions. Put the expression inside the ladder, look at the coefficients of the variables, and see what factor they have in common. In this instance, I know that 35 and 56 are both divisible by 7. So 35 divided by 7 gives you 5y bring down my plus sign, 56 divided by 7, or 56 z's split into 7 groups, as I really would love the students to think about it, would give you groups of 8z. Okay, and you would write that by doing 7 parentheses 5y plus 8z. And I encourage the students to check their work. 7 times 5 is 35y, 7 times 8 is 56z. Okay, let's do the next one together. 32a plus 16b. Okay, again, I encourage the students to take the expression and to put it into the ladder method. Students might not see the largest factor at first, but these are both divisible by 2. They're both even numbers. So 32 divided by 2 is 16a. 16b divided by 2 is 8b. Now I see these are both divisible by 8. 16a divided by a, 8 is 2a. 8b divided by 8 is just 1b, because 8 divided by 8 is 1, and you would have 1b, okay? And we don't usually write the coefficient of 1, because 1b is just 1b. So you find the GCF first. 8 times 2 is 16. And then in parentheses, you put the bottom of your ladder, which is 2a plus b. 16 times 2 would give the students 32a. 16 times b is 16b. Okay, the next um, topic we talked about was using the distributive property to work backwards to expand the expressions. 5 times 3t is 15t. 5 times 7y is 35y and you bring down the addition sign, okay? So 15t plus 35y, okay, and then you would do the same thing. You can have a variable outside of your parentheses. This is 2et plus 3ft, okay? Another thing I'd like to, I'd like to do some review ones today. Um, so I've added two more to the end of this lesson, just to make sure we're constantly reviewing our topics. I'm going to have you write PEMDAs at the side, parentheses, exponents, multiplication or division, addition and subtraction. So I'm going to go, do it, go through and do my parentheses first. This squared belongs to the number, uh, the sum of 4 and 5. So 4 plus 5 is 9 to the second power, minus 15 times 3 is 45. Now I'm going to do my exponents. I'm going to box my 9 to the second power. I'm going to put two 9s in multiplication. 9 times 9 is 81. I'm going to bring down the n number and symbol they didn't use in the exact same order they were presented to me. There's no multiplication or division, so finally I'm going to add or subtract. 81 minus 45 is going to give you a difference of 36. Okay. That's order of operations review. And one last review one. Okay, you want to find four points that are three units away, horizontally and vertical, vertically from the point three nine. So I'm just going to start by making four blank points. Three nine would be in quadrant one, and it, it's right there. So you want to find three units up and three units down from this point, 
which would mean that the x value would stay the same. It would stay 3 right on this line, okay? So I'm going to keep two threes. If I go up four units from nine, nine plus four is gonna get you to 13. So it's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's one, two, three, four points up. If you start at nine, oh, and see Mrs. Kramer needs to slow down. It's not four, it's three units away. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, good thing I'm checking my math. If I go down three units from nine, eight, seven, six. Nine minus three gives you a six. Now if you go horizontally, you're gonna have the same y value of nine. So you're gonna keep your nines, and then you are gonna you could go down three units, one, two, three. You would be at the zero x value. Or you could go up three units, four, five, six. And that is how we do this lesson.